Yo, what is going on, AP people? Key court cases under John Marshall. You need to know him and all the court cases that we will see here. So let's get started. A couple main ideas to keep in mind with John Marshall and the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court during this time period increased the power of the federal government. So this really is the beginning of the Supreme Court being equal with the other two branches. And decisions helped to promote business and the economy. So two questions, two ideas you need to know with John Marshall and the Supreme Court under his reign. One, the power of the federal government was increased and two, the economy prospered as well or decisions were made that favored the economy. And when the federal government became more powerful, it did so at the expense of state governments, as we will see. Okay, we're going to go to the beginning, the, the very first important key uh, court case under John Marshall. It was, and it was Marbury versus Madison in 1803. So here's the summary of the case. There was a midnight judge appointed by John Adams in the last few days of his presidency. His name was Marbury, and he was a Federalist. Now... The papers for him to become a judge were to be delivered when Thomas Jefferson was president by his Secretary of State, James Madison. They did not want a Federalist judge to be on there, so they refused to deliver his papers. So, so Marbury, the Federalist judge, sues Madison, the Secretary of State. Now, you don't really know the outcome of it, uh, but what the significance is that this established the principle of judicial review. And what does that mean? You need to know this. It is that the Supreme Court can declare laws unconstitutional. Please know, Marbury versus Madison established judicial review, which allows the Supreme Court to declare laws unconstitutional. And here's a very famous quote from this case. It is emphatically the province and duty of the judicial department to say what the law is. And this increased the power of the Supreme Court. Okay, 16 years later, we have a very famous quote case McCulloch versus Maryland and the summary of this case was it dealt with the second bank of the United States or the bus and this is Henry Ch Henry Clay's brainchild first bus expired a few years before second one is created Maryland the state of Maryland did not like the bank of the United States so they wanted to tax a branch of it hoping to destroy the bus so the bus sues Maryland and the Supreme Court sides against the state of Maryland. And John Marshall says the power to tax involves the power to destroy. And this helps establish the idea that f the federal government is supreme over state governments. And also on another side note that is very important to know, they had a chance here, the Supreme Court, to declare the Bank of the United States unconstitutional and they did not. So the bus is constitutional and the federal government is more powerful than the state governments. Same year, we have Dartmouth College versus Woodward. The summary of the case was New Hampshire was trying to change the charter of the college Dartmouth. And Daniel Webster, who is part of the Great Triumph, a very famous House of Representative member and the Senate, actually argued this case before the Supreme Court because he was a Dartmouth graduate. So the significance, John Marshall in the Supreme Court says the charter was a contract and the Constitution protected contracts against state encroachment. So contracts must be honored. That's the significance of Dartmouth College. 1824, one of the more famous court cases, Gibbons versus Ogden. We need to understand two key ideas first. One is interstate trade, which is trade between states, so that's two or more. So if New York and Pennsylvania are trading with each other, that is interstate trade. Intrastate trade is trade within a state, only one. So if I live in Buffalo, which I do, and I own a business and I sell goods to Rochester, New York, which is about an hour away, that is intrastate trade. But if I live in Buffalo, New York, and I sell goods to where I used to live in Cincinnati, Ohio, that is inter because it is between states. So New York State grants a monopoly to a boat company on the Hudson River, and the Hudson River involved trade between New York and New Jersey. So the question before the Supreme Court is, can a state control interstate trade? And here's a very uh, good political cartoon I found on Google. The bullet on the left says, get out, New York gave me the exclusive right to operate steamships in New York waters. And the one on the right says, wrong, New York State gave the United States the exclusive right to regulate interstate commerce. So the significance is, John Marshall says, no, an individual state cannot control interstate trade. Congress is the one that has sole control over interstate trade. Two core cases involving Native Americans you'll need to know under John Marshall's uh, reign. First one is Cherokee Nation versus Georgia in 1831. 
And the Cherokee Nation sues Georgia, saying that they should, they're should they their own independent sovereign nation and they should not be forced to move and abide by certain specific Georgia laws. The Supreme Court ruled that the Cherokee Nation was not a foreign nation with the right to sue in federal court. Basically, they said, John Marshall said to the Cherokee Indians, you are not U.S. citizens, so you cannot sue in this court. So the significance is that under this, the Cherokees must follow Georgia law and they could be forced to move west, as the Indian Removal Act of 1830 said. Now, what John Marshall also said was, if you can get somebody to sue on your behalf who is a U.S. citizen, we will hear this case again. So one year later, Worcester is an American citizen who sues Georgia on behalf of the Native Americans. This ruled that the laws of Georgia had no force within the boundaries of the Cherokee land and that the Cherokee Nation could not be required to move west. Well, Andrew Jackson, who's president at this time, does not like that very much. So he allegedly says, John Marshall has made his decision, let him enforce it. So he blatantly disregards the responsibility of the presidency to enforce the law and enforce court decisions and natives are forced to move west and this leads to the trail of tears you notice that many of these originated in georgia okay hey, those are all the important supreme court cases you need to know under john marshall hope you enjoyed this video please spread the word subscribe to my channel if you have not already check out apushreview.com and uh, if you have any comments or questions please feel free to leave them thanks for watching guys have a good day